Okay, I'm at this uh, point where I'm going to uh, <clears throat> do the drawers. I've already roughed out the drawers and I've decided to go with box joints. Um, now, I cut my, first of all, I made a, first time I ever did in my life, I made a uh, uh, zero clearance uh, plate here on my, on my table saw. I've never done it before, I don't know why. Never took the time to do it, but um, came out pretty good. But I'll tell you what, I've got another one I'm going to make for my uh, for my um, box joint blade. If you notice, I don't have a hole. I just tilt it here and it comes up. This part, when I've seen guys make these things, pff, that, that's nothing. They'll talk about how they're going to measure the length and the radius and all that. Matthews does that and all of the mathematics. The other guys will take the plate, but the plate's too sloppy and all that. And it, you know, I just, I cut the width large, I mean tight, made the radius, band saw it, and then fit it in with a, with a um, disc sander. I mean, that's, that's no big deal. But that's nothing. They talk about doing that. that the underside. Take a look at this baby. Look at all the work I had to do on this sucker. I'm telling you, there are so many doodads under that thing with a, just a very little lip. Uh, I put a screw here to, to hold it. I mean, it didn't have to be anything really, really exotic. Here's this lip here. Ain't all that around there. So what I'm going to do, because I know a lot of guys don't have saws, just the plate just drops in easy like that. And this is a, this is a port of cable. It's not a bad saw, but all this junk here, these these level screws and everything with these little plates, they got to put they got to put the screw on a plate. But it's so high up, and yet this is not a belt-driven saw. So you know it's not hooked to the motor. So you know even the engineers are limited. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to figure out a way to make this thing on a, on a router table. <clears throat> so I can see now all this gouging I did and everything. I really didn't have to do. It's all, it's all lip here. I can do probably two passes on a router table. The, the very fine lip and then a deeper cut. And then that's it. But I'm going to wait till I get around to do that before I uh, do that. <clears throat> what I want to talk about is when I did my panels. Here they are right here. And I use A 60 tooth saw with, with, with the, the zero clearance and I mean look how look how clean these cuts are. You, there, no chip out. I mean it's this you, you thought I was cutting melamine with a melamine saw. What I used to call a uh, Formica saw back in my day. I was at Formica saws that uh, especially made for Formica and in fact that's kind of what we had in France. Those type of saws are big. And we cut everything with that. <laughs> I'm telling you, bunch of crazy. Pretty, pretty expensive saw blades. We cut everything with it because we did a lot of guys come in here and cut a bunch, bunch of stock of melamine uh, on our on our saw too. So, and this is our regular big saw with the push thing, not uh, not the panel saw back in the other other department. <clears throat> the other department maybe cut uh, uh, 40 millimeter thick uh, MDF. So. This is my insert. Don't have any holes in it. Don't need holes. I just poke the side. It comes right up, and uh, works out great. You know, you saw the panels, and this is this saw. Uh, this is saw I that I use the 60 inch. It's, it's not a real luxurious saw. But they make some really good saws. Some other companies, but this saw is not a really expensive one. 
compared to some other ones, you saw the job I did and did a beautiful job. Now, well, this is the um, uh, rigid carbide uh, box panel saw. That's what you, you might want to get uh, when you do your little box joints and you just a quarter inch. Uh, various things you can do with this saw, which is a saw which is a good blade. I'm going to go my dado stack. <clears throat> now, like I said, I'm going to do box joints. Uh, I didn't go through showing you how I, I cut all those panels. No need to watch a guy peel 50 potatoes, I, I figure. Uh, you get a decent saw blade and you have a zero clearance, you, you can do the same thing. Now, if you don't have the money to buy a blade like that for something, for, for example, or you're not sure how to do a zero clearance, you're just going to have to suffer with some chip out. What you can do if you want to is put a piece of tape where you know where your cut's going to be, put some masking tape or red, blue tape or green tape, whatever, on the back side, and that'll help. That'll help some of the chip out. It won't be a perfect, but uh, it'll help. And, and, and cut. Don't, don't, don't go out. Some of the guys go so slow. Feeds and speeds. Feel your cutter as it's biting. It'll tell you if it's going too hard or too slow. Because going too slow is no good either. You burn everything up, you burn the bill, you burn the cut, the bill ale up, burn your material up. Why? You know, learn how to, you know, your feeds and speeds on all your material, whether it's in plywood cuts different than hardwood or different than pine. So, you know, it's all different. Um, again, I'm going to go my dado stack. I'll make a box joints. I'm not going to do a lot of uh, video on box joints because. In my opinion, there's only one guy to, to, to listen about box joints. Believe me, I've watched them all on YouTube. I mean, I live on YouTube. I've watched them all. All of them. In my opinion, there are two guys for box joints and dovetails on a table saw. Forgive me for not remembering the guy's name for the dovetails, but he has very two very simple little jigs where you, you, you tilt the blade, on one jig, and then you you uh, you tilt the other the other jig with a blade straight up. Very simple jig. I'll tell you what, it does a beautiful job. But your your dovetails have to be symmetrical. So it's not like hand cut, hand cut dovetails. They can vary a little bit. These got to be your layout's got to be really right on the button. But I mean, it's simple jigs, and it does a beautiful job. And the other fellow for the box joints, William Ing. I mean, the man's an engineer, and turn, turn carpenter, you know. Uh, I can't see how anyone would, would criticize his supposedly being anal with numbers. I mean, he's, the man knows what he's talking about, and if you want precision, that's it. That's where it's at. If you, if you don't have the, precision, the patience for precision, why bother? You know, really, why bother? Why do you, just hack them, cut them with a handsaw if you want to pound them out. But... He is so sharp in terms of telling you that your little guide piece should be about four thousand smaller than the actual opening, so of ease of, of getting in and out makes a lot of sense. And plywood cuts different than hardwood. Plywood's like a sponge; it kind of you know your cut's not going to be the same as you as you cut a piece of oak or, or walnut, you know, or cherry or pine. They're all a little bit different. Uh, the other thing is cutting the, um, uh, the, 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 the the tails a little narrower. I mean, it makes so much sense. My biggest thing about these things is where the glue is going to go. I understand dovetails got to be tight because after all, it's a de nowadays it's a, it's a decorative item. Before it wasn't. You'd hide them, but nowadays a decorative item, you got to be tight. I I understand that, but when you're doing something with some kind of glue, uh, structural. You've got to have some place for the glue to go. Now, I'm not saying being sloppy. I'm just saying you got to give it some. I mean, if you're pounding it in, you know, where's it? And then again, pl plywood, it swells, it expands. You, you can have a real mess, you know. So I'm saying for bo for box joints, I'm, I'm not going to put any pictures here. Just the next photo, I'm going to have them all done. Um, I go with a half inch. I either go quarter or half inch, three eighths, uh, sometime, but more than. Mainly it's a half, half inch I'm, I'm usually working with because for me it's better. Uh, this idea of 3 eighths working pretty good only with certain numbers. <laughs> Mathematics, work it out yourself. I'm dealing with different, I'm dealing with eight, 18 inch deep drawer, 6 inch deep drawers, 
six and a half inch deep drawers. So three eighths is not working for me. Half inch. Half inch is right on the button. And when I put my slot one panel for the, for the big panel, so the machine goes in this one drawer, I'm having a three quarter uh, bottom. So I'm going to have a three eighths uh, uh, dado for that panel to go in. It's still going to hide because I'm going to cut like like William says, well Billy boy, cut your fronts and back first, then cut your sides, and then I will hide the slot that you're you're cutting for your panel. So that's it about the blades. I want to talk about uh, again. There are a lot of different makes for the uh, for the box joint. I got the rigid carbide super blade. Uh, box joints blade is called, and it's, I mean, you know, how can you go wrong? And then any any kind of a 60 tooth or, or like I said, uh, uh, what I used to call a Formica blade. They've got a different uh, configuration all, all together. They're not flat on top. They got a little bit of crown, but a uh, point. They got your, your your two teeth go back and forth, and the center one it kind of goes like this, and then top flat like that. But it's for a real fine, smooth cut, and uh, and again, mainly for they came out with, with from for Formica, and I did, used to do a lot of Formica years ago. Did a lot of Formica. So <clears throat> that's it. I want to put a video up someday for this other insert I'm going to make. Other than that, I'm going to get to work on making my box joints, and um, I've got my glides all set in my case. Um, then I'm going to start uh, gluing up uh, for my raised panels and my drawer fronts. So other than that, uh, I'm going to start cutting. So that's it. Uh, see you next next shot. <laughs>
Well, there you have it. Uh, I started to uh, finish my, uh, my, my drawers. As you can see, uh, this one, I think that one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. This one's got 19 pins in it. <laughs> this one's got a whole machine, the, the ball spinning machine for my buddy and his, um, his bench. And this is all three quarter plywood, the rest of the drawers are half inch. And uh, a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, you know, this is Lowell's, or this was Home Depot, they had better selection, plywood. It's still a crap, you know. I don't know why they don't go ahead and sell the Chinese stuff and then give you a choice of buying some better stuff, you know. Instead of having to go to Analog and all those places to, to get it, in my case. Uh, but I'll tell you what I'm, I'm thinking now, if I do any more plywood work, I don't do, do that much with plywood anymore, but uh, in this case, you know, I always dealt with balls and birch. You know, our, our drawers are all ball and birch, easy to round them over, and then, I mean, it's such a beautiful plywood that when you uh, finish that, it's, it's, it's beautiful, it really is nice. In fact, one shop I used to work for, Ungerfuss, their workbenches were all plywood. Stop and think about it. They, you know, they did a lot of plywood, so they kept the scraps. They would have a bunch of scraps. They saw a man where they could start sawing up a bunch of strips, glue them together, sand them. And I'll tell you what, think about it. A plywood top bench, especially if it's all Baltic birch, man, you, you can't believe what a, what a solid bench that is. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's also nice looking. But uh, you, you talk about something stable, and and just just depends how thick you make it, you know how hard you make it. But you, you, I tell you, my thing about you guys who do a lot of plywood, don't throw it away. Save the scraps, cut some lengths after a while. You got a day off, whatever, and, and make yourself some fantastic bench tops. Anyways, <clears throat> the other thing I was going to talk about was you know when I'm finishing stuff. Here's a here's a block I have for example. I have all kinds of sanding blocks. I even got a, lo a longer one back here. I'm not going to use the camera. A little long one, shorter ones. I have all kinds of sanding blocks because a lot of times <clears throat> when you're finishing something, you know, why, why put it on a plate or something? Sand it down to your fine dimension. If you're going to fi real fine dimensions, uh, which is what I did on my uh, my setup here. Now it's been a long time since I did box uh, box joints. I don't think I've ever did a box joint uh, drawer this big, but uh, this time I did strictly the way William Ng uh, uh, dimensions it, meaning four thousandths less than what your actual opening is, and then making your 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 your, uh, your pins uh, six thousandths smaller than your your, uh, your your opening, your cut, your 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 your, your tail. That way, it facilitates an easier, but yet still snug assembly. You got room for uh, the glue. You don't have to pound it. That's what I did. I, I did this time, and I'll tell you what. Uh, for my four, for my pin, I, I cut it to length, and I, I took my sanding block and I sanded it down instead of taking my saw and with the calipers and all. I got calipers. So I just sanded it down till I get there, and it came out great. You know, so. I mean, just, just another way of doing something. I'm not saying his way is wrong, no. But um, I just don't want to keep fudging the fence over and all. Just sand it. It took 4,000. Know, 4, uh, that, that's not much. So you, uh, it didn't take me long at all to get that right right there where I wanted it. Just another idea. But um, you, you really can't go wrong. If you're in the box joints, uh, that's really, I, I like the simplicity of the jig. And that's why I mentioned last uh, uh, last video, I mentioned the dovetail. And that's Matt Kenny on fine woodworking, Matt Kenny. Two real simple little jigs. And all you do is tilt the blade for one, and on the other, the blade is straight up, and you're, you're going back and forth, I believe, for the tails with the other jig. Two separate jigs. I mean, small, I mean, you know, half inch bottom. Uh, whatever you want for the top, and that's it, you know, it, it really, it's, uh, to me, simplicity is everything. Now, some people like the gizmos, 
and uh, now you're talking about, I don't write these guys' names, I don't want to mispronounce them. James King of King's Fine Working, there's a fellow, he is really, he's amazing what he does, he has his girls in there working with him all that. I believe I've seen his son one time in there. Matt, Matthias Wandel, I believe he's the engineer who actually designed the, uh, is it the Penner, Penner router or something like that, where it cuts uh, tenons and mortises and now it does all kinds of stuff. And then some guy in India now took its designs and made actual metal uh, jig, uh, you know, I'm sure with Matthias, you know, he's involved somehow. He did any better. <laughs> better be. Fantastic tool. I mean, it's a great tool. And then, of course, there's uh, old snubs. I, I like stuffy snub. Man, the planes this guy's got. I mean, I don't know if he actually himself went out to junk stores or yard sales, but all these wooden planes he's got and uh, his backdrop. Now he's kind of modernized his, uh, his shop and he's doing more. Uh, machine stuff and now he's going by his name James uh, uh, James Hamilton and I, I think he had a great show but here's another these three fellas they made very complex uh, box joint jigs with you know a threaded rod and all and there's been others just a few, you know, a few guys I wanted to mention Matthias actually made his gears out of wood everything but, uh, you know, if you like that stuff, I mean, why not? You know, I, I think it's great. Uh, I didn't mean to make a reference like uh, they're no good, they're a drag, but not at all. I mean, some people like to do stuff like that. Um, uh, I would have loved to have gotten the model airplanes when I was a kid. Uh, now, radio control, and now I go on the internet, inter internet and watch these guys with these big, huge model airplanes. But any plane you can think of, someone's out there building it. I'll tell you, the Germans, they are really into it. But, um... You know, everyone's got their own thing. Um, me personally, Ings uh, is set up uh, just for me personally. There's no other one. None. So precise. It is so simple. And if you just end it, you know, get it done and go. Now, if I thought maybe if I had some big production run, yeah, I'd, I'd get dovetailing jigs and all that, you know, because time is money, you know. But uh, I like to do my dovetails by hand. And what I liked about this uh, this table uh, saw jig that uh, Matt and Kenny had, it's, it's so simple, and yet you can pump out a lot of a lot of uh, dovetails with it. You know, very nice. A uh, li little bit of a uh, uh, chisel work, you know, for the one. I think it's a, I think it would be for the, the the tails, I believe. But that's the pleasure about woodworking. There are so many ways to go, and. Um, you know, I'm just saying that uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm edge banding the tops because it's plywood. If it was ball and birch, I wouldn't be doing it. But this is so ugly. <laughs> to me, it is so ugly. And I try to pick out the best ones. And um, it's edge banding. You know, I'm, I hope it lasts. But, I mean, at least I'm going to present it to my customer uh, uh, as best as I can now. How they treat it, up to them, you know. But, um, and I know how to edge band. So, you know, but edge banding is edge banding. Um, it's not like maybe putting a tongue and groove piece of hard, hardwood on the edge there, and, you know, and really setting in. But, but still, you know, I mean, I'm actually doing it for a friend of mine. I'm not charging him. He's already sent me some money for the material. Uh, I told him I'd just make it for him because he's been, my wife used to work for him, and he was just such a nice man in my life that I, I really appreciate that. And uh, I like that guy personally. I, we've never had a chance to hang around together, but I just really like the guy. So uh, uh, I'm doing this extra just for eye appeal, you know. And um, you saw how I shaved it off with my chisel. There's my, here's my chisel there. I just uh, you shave you shave. See the edge there. That sharp edge. Uh, that could be. This could be an iron. Out of your out of your. Uh, block plane or something, you know. Now they make tools for this. <laughs> you pull it off. Uh, back, back in my day, I, I used to make them out of walnut. I, I made my own. I used to get a, get a, um, uh, a safety razor, you know, got that ridge on the end. Or you could use the exacto knife razor. But you get a safety razor, got the ridge in. And I'd make a, one out of walnut. We just, you know, back in those days, <laughs> you know, you, you always made your own stuff. It was kind of like 
almost kind of like bragging on your ability or whatever, you know. But uh, that's what we did because we did a lot of uh, edge banding, front mic work, and whatever. And it, it even worked, you know. It, I mean, it's, for some front micers that are real thin front micers, we could even use it with that. So, uh, and, you know, quick. And when you get used to it, you know, all these tricks, and, and it, it may look startling, but it works if you know how to do it. Um, that's basically it. I, I'm, I'm just going to finish my uh, little sanding, and then I'm going to uh, finish on, put some uh, uh, urethane on, on all these drawers. I'm going to mount my glide first, and then my glide's already mounted in, in, in the case. I'm going to mount the glide for here first, put it upside down, and I'm just going to urethane what's exposed. I don't want urethane to get down on the glide or anything. And, I'm, and this one I'm going to go in. Oh, I'm going to go inside and out on all of them. But uh, you'll see, you'll see on, on, on these other drawers, uh, on two of them, the two upper drawers, because it's a big drawer here for the machine, and then there's a smaller drawer below it. And I'm just going to that open for like maybe rags or something like that. Because again, this is a ball spinner, so it's going to be he's going to be using wax and whatever at, at times doing stuff with the ball. So he'll, maybe he'll put his rags right there. But the other ones, I'm, I made them deep. I made them six inches deep. And there's a reason for that, and I'll show you in my next video why. And uh, other than that, um, uh, that's it. I just wanted to show you that, uh, you know, it, it came out. I, I had a, a 60 tooth blade with, uh, with my uh, zero tolerance uh, plate I, that I just made. First one I ever made in my life. <laughs> I'm going to make a video on that one, too, because they're, they're not all that simple. Uh, you can see these guys on TV. Mine was pretty complicated on my Porter cable saw. But, uh, I mean... Bam! No, no blowout at all, even on this cheap stuff. It was just, I, I showed you on my other one. So if you've got the right tools, I mean, that, that's half the battle right there. You know, if you can spend the money to buy the right tools, blades and everything. So I'm going to get back to it and finish these up. And the next time, uh, next video, with the next click, I guess, you'll, you'll see them all uh, finished and, uh, and, um, and most likely in, in, the, uh, in the bench. So... Um, I think I said everything I was going to talk about. Uh, again, hats off to the guys who make these uh, these jigs so complex. I mean, it's you know, it's nice uh, what they can do, you know, and, and, and they have a they have a place. They do have a place, and uh, it's it's a very ingenious, you know. Uh, by no means am I, you know, saying it's it's not worth its merit. It definitely is worth its merit, you know, and uh, with that, uh, I'm gonna get back to work. And uh, see you on the next clip. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye-bye. Well, um, here I am again. <laughs> I closed up the shop and uh, got all cleaned up. And I, I got to thinking about a few things that didn't say quite right and then something else just came to mind as I was sitting here before I put everything away and just kind of looking at uh, at the drawers here and I'm real pleased how they came out I mean they really uh, they have really good action and uh, you know precise measurements and, and everything uh, fits like a glove and no no problem whatsoever but a couple of things I want to mention about uh, the doors. The first thing I want to correct was when I was talking about this uh, this uh, trimmer that I made. It was not a walnut. And I had two, not one. I had two. I think the first one I made out of rosewood. And the other one I made out of teak. And I'm not sure exactly what the reason, but I'm going to think about that. And uh, I, might, I might make one later on just to kind of show how you can do something like that. Uh, again, you can buy these things. You know, you can buy these things on the market, and um, they work really good. Especially if you, you know, when you got a lot of stuff to do, man, they are really handle handy because to do it with the chisel like I'm doing it, then or or a iron. I mean, it's, you know, these things pull like that, it's done. You know, and it's really really nice. And the ones we made were the same way. They were they're just really quick. You know, it's just you know we we made our own. Uh, just another bit of uh, you know carpentry. <clears throat> The other thing I want to talk about is the layout for your for your panels at the bottom, and this is in reference to Mr. Ng, and uh, and I'm not 
in any way criticizing his work. I mean, the guy was talking about specifically his, how his dimensions work really well with 3H, and um, he's exactly right. And I'm, I'm totally convinced with his system, that's the way I'll ever do uh, uh, box joints. In this situation, though, I'm usually working with, you know, credenzas, executive desks, things like that, where they have, you know, uh, they have <coughs> uh, file drawers in their desk or other things. So I'm used to doing bigger, deeper. I mean, look at this, this thing. This is this monster here. 19, 19 pins on this. Um, the point I want to make is I like to use quarter or half inch. I really very seldom use quarter unless I'm using, working something really small. That's the that's when I used to do dovetails years ago making things. Pretty much I'm always in a half inch because a half inch in my opinion hits any dimension. You know. Uh, it, I mean and it, it, of course you know William's talking about his eye appeal and aesthetics and you know he's a more refined furniture uh, uh, maker in that sense, uh, although I've, you know, I've made a lot, but mainly for offices and that type. I've never got into the, uh, into the, uh, uh, you know, uh, French uh, uh, provincial type because the, what we did in France was mainly with the chateaus, uh, the actual structures, the walls, raised paneling, even even some parquet flooring, a little bit, not much, but a little bit, but. Uh, not making the uh, the desks, around desk and carving. I'm not into carving, and I'm definitely not into a lathe. You know, uh, uh, I, I like good. Uh, if you ever watch me working in my small shop, you'll never see a lot of uh, dust flying around. Uh, the only time when I was using, when I was when I was when I was topping, uh, pointing the uh, the top here with my with my router sled. Now I'm going to make a, a different. Uh, dust collector for that because I had it all over the place. Anyways, what I'm talking about is when you're doing drawers. Now I have half inch bottoms and three quarter in this one because of the weight. And it's it's a work it's a workbench. So I don't want to put on some these are these are wide drawers, so I'm not gonna put a quarter inch in this and he's gonna have tools or whatever in there. I'm you know I don't know what but so I'm sitting back here and I'm looking at this down here. <laughs> this pole. At the, wait, what? What is this? Because I, I, you know, like the way William was talking about, you know, do your fronts first, you know, do your sides, and I thought, like, yeah, I did my fronts first. But what I'm realizing, and I just took it for granted, is, you know, you got to lay out your, your where your dado is going to be, your tongue, and then put that into the pin that's facing out through the door so that would have been up here and I should have put it another quarter inch above it had been fine but I wasn't thinking about that so uh, I just thought I'd bring that up uh, for beginners I know the hardcore guys you know all know this already but um, three eighths half inch whatever your whatever size your tail is uh, I mean your, your you know what your your, your box is gonna be so when you're calculating for that panel, uh, quarter inch, half inch, three quarter. Like I said, I was, you know, I was using three quarter bottoms at one, and then half inch and all my others. And uh, I didn't think about that dado. It should have come out through the front. I just automatically, you know, made my dado and came, did the the the, the, the fronts first and the sides. And then lo and behold, because here you, you don't, you know, you don't see that. Don't tell anybody, but I use putty. <laughs> I'm gonna say don't use the putty, but uh, I, I block them up and sand them. I sand them all real nice, and I'm gonna put uh, urethane tomorrow on all these. And then I got some interior work I'm gonna do. I'll show you that later. What I'm doing. I edge banded all the tops. They're all edge banded, nice, you know. And uh, um, I mean, I think it came out really well. Again, I, I can't I can't say enough about William uh, Ng's uh, uh, system for box joints. Um, other than that, um, I just wanted to point out this about keep in mind if you're doing something a little bit different, a little bit larger, in, in, draw, in, in drawer bottoms, uh, make sure that when you lay it out for that dado, it's coming out the lower the lower pin. If you keep if you're keeping your panel low. As low as you can, 
but that data is coming out the bottom pin of the side panel. Okay, that data is coming out the bottom pin of the side panel, or whatever dimension has got to come out the side panel, the bottom pin, because if you just put it flat at the bottom, and you got it thicker, like like here, it's gonna it's gonna come out the wrong end here. And you know, tomorrow I'll I'll doctor it up. I'll put something in there, and plug it up. I'm not gonna leave it that way. Um, that's, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to mention that. Um, I thought it'd be a little extra to to point out, you know. And uh, I'm sure William would say the same thing about different sizes. He was just specifically talking about three eighths. He likes three eighths, and uh, his his dimensional drawers are usually fall right in that in in that uh, framework. And of course, his quarters panel, boom, it's, it's right there. So he's he's exactly right, you know. I'm just talking about a little bit different. Uh, if you happen to work in, you know, larger stuff like I do, and uh, um, just a consideration. Uh, other, other than that, I, I mentioned about those two trimmers, and uh, that's it. Um, um, other than that, um, I, I'm gonna get back to work tomorrow and finish this up. I'm, I'm gonna put this up on like, YouTube just for for this little section here on, on dovetail, I mean on, on box joints and, and that kind of stuff. I think it might be good for, uh, you know, some beginners uh, might not know about that. Other than that, that's it. Uh, again, you know, have a good time in the shop. Work safe. Work safe. And absolutely don't use any putty. <laughs> don't use any putty. <laughs> okay. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.